Okay, now you can see I've got this, this copy here. I probably want to come in here. Now really, this part over here also doesn't come up that much either. Like, we're not certainly going to get these in triangles or anything like that, which is the same as with Pythagoras. So the first place, and you should highlight this on your diagram, the first place that most people would go is to restrict your acute angles, right? To say, not to pi on two, we really want those, right? They come up all the time. So they're kind of like, yeah, if you don't choose those, you're crazy, right? They're so useful to us. So we definitely want from naught to pi on two, okay? However, as you've just noticed, because what restricts us is turning points, what restricts us is turning points, being that you can get this half, you kind of might as well get this bit. It's, you know, it comes along for free. It doesn't present any problems to getting an inverse function. It doesn't give you an inverse relation by accident. Um, unlike, say, say this part here, so this part I've got, this, these obtuse angles, they would be nice, wouldn't they? They would be nice. But you can't get them without causing a problem, without getting a relation. Right? So therefore, here is what we're going to choose, we're going to define. So, y equals sine x, no inverse function, right? But if we restrict y equals sine x from minus pi on 2 to pi on 2. So if you took from pi on 2 to 3 pi on 2, that could still be a function if you were to try and find the, like the inverse would still be a function. So could you say those angles again? Where were you talking about? From pi on 2 to 3 mm -hmm. pi on 2. Mm -hmm. yep. If you reflected that on y equals x, you would still have a function. Yes, that's true. Yeah, you would. But um, So I could, I could choose it from anywhere I like. But then if I choose this part, I lose the yeah. acute angles. Yeah. Right? And here's the important thing, right? If I know a base angle, a reference angle, right? I can go from the acute to the obtuse, and I can go from the equivalent obtuse to the acute. I can go in either direction. But why go from a harder angle to work with to the easier, more common angle? Isn't it better to start from this one and then say, I can get all of the related angles from that one, which you've already been doing for a long time with all stations to central and so on. Okay. So I'm going to say, this guy here with a restricted domain, this has an inverse function. And we're going to define that. We define that as sine inverse. OK? Now, please note, remember when we talked about um, this morning and yesterday afternoon, that algebraically, the thing you can say about an inverse function, if it really is the inverse function, is that taking the inverse of the original function should hand you back what? should hand you back the original number, right? And you can also do it in reverse, which is kind of nice, okay? However, look carefully, right? Sine inverse of sine x. Does it follow this? Think about it. Don't, don't shout out an answer just yet. Sine inverse of sine x. Will it always hand you back x? Now, it's clear sometimes it will, right? Let's just do a quick example. Uh, we know, say, sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero. zero. Sine inverse of zero is going to say, well, which angle in this red dotted domain has a value of zero up and down here? And the answer is, it's that one. It's OK, right? In fact, any of these angles in here, they're fine. It'll hand you back the angle that you came from, right? It'll do this, right? But you got your calculator there? Get your calculator out. If you're outside that domain, you're in trouble, aren't you? You're in trouble. You don't need to write this part, but I do want you to punch into your calculator. If you, for example, do sine inverse of sine, hmm, let's go, well, we already said 3 pi on 2. That's outside the domain, OK? Now, just be careful with your brackets. Sine inverse of sine 3 pi on 2. And don't forget, I hope you're in radians. What did it tell you? Oh, no. you got a decimal, right? Yeah. Say that again. <laughs> okay, so if you're getting this, I know it's a yucky decimal, but it ought to be a yucky decimal. You should start to recognize what yucky decimal is it? Almost. I'm expecting an angle, aren't I? Expecting an angle out of this? Right? Like it would usually hand me back an angle. If I doubled this, it looks like I get 3.14. Okay, so what's happened? 
What has happened? It's handed me back, rather than the angle I started with, the only angles it has to choose from are the ones I restricted it to, right? It's like, look, I said, this, this outside world, now it doesn't exist to you anymore, sign universe. All it can ever hand back to you is something within this domain, okay? So that's why it hands you, look, here's 3 pi on 2, right? So your calculator says, I know what sine 3 pi on 2 is. It's negative 1. And then it goes to the next step. Sine inverse of negative 1. Which angle in my domain will give me negative 1 when I take that angle? And the answer is, there it is, right there. That's the only one I've got. So you see, this causes a bit of a problem. Okay? Now, remember we said you can do this. You can also do it in reverse, right? Right? Hmm. So what would happen if we did say sine of sine inverse of 3 pi on 2? You have a calculator there. Now, type it in, but don't yet hit equals. Think about it for a second before you hit equals. Okay? We saw this happen. Now I want you to predict. I want you to predict. If we know something is a bit funky here, right? Because we've, we've mucked around with it. What are you going to expect to come out? Are you going to expect minus pi on 2? Are you going to expect something else? And of course it tells you. It tells you, go home. Why you make me do these things for, right? Now, why? The question, of course, is why? You'll have to go up to K block. Between K12 and K13. <laughs> Sorry about that. Raph, would you be so kind as to begin your thought again? And just so you can answer for me. It's because 3 pi on 2 is outside the um, range of the original function. Yep, it's outside the domain here, which means it's outside the range of this. Yes, good, okay. So can you see what happens, right? It's just like this, right? What's gonna happen if you say to your calculator, hey, especially if you have a not 100 AU, if you say something like this, right? It's gonna tell you math error, which is way of saying, you're outside of the domain. This doesn't make sense, okay? Just the same thing here, okay? Now a question for you, I'm not gonna do it right now, it comes up in a later exercise. What would this look like? Like as in, you, you know what this looks like, this graph, and you know what this looks like, okay? What do the graphs of each of these functions appear to look like? Sine inverse of sine x and sine of sine inverse of x. They're interesting. I'll let you have a think about it. We will deal with that later on, okay? But you, there's no reason why you can't think about it now, okay? 